Welcome to the nursery. I'm Eleanor Burns. Sitting in this rocking chair with a book of nursery rhymes brings back fond memories of reading to my sons, Grant and Orion, when they were just babies. Well, they both had favorite crib quilts that they loved being snuggled in. You know, many crib quilts were fashioned after nursery rhymes. And here is the star of nursery rhymes herself, Mother Goose. Well, she looks a little frightening, such a decrepit old lady. Well, the artwork is typical of the time period because this is a piece of red work from around 1875. Now, these blocks were pre-printed for outline embroidery and then sold for a penny a piece. Thus, they were referred to as penny squares. Now, turkey red floss was popular at the turn of the century because of its color fastness. And then red work was usually finished with turkey red sashing. Well, I know you recognize these other rhymes. Right here, we have little Bo Peep, and here's her sheep following along behind. And Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, jumping over that candlestick. And I have a second sheet here. This is little Bo Peep looking for her sheep. So cute. And down here is Goosey Goosey Gander. That's a wonderful goose there. Well, historically, attitudes to our children have not always been so full of tenderness. Well, the children of the Middle Ages shared about the same status as domestic animals. They were sent out to a wet nurse, and then when they were barely old enough, they were expected to work for the community. Well, the parents had so many children, that children were replaceable. I want you to look at the pictures of the three little kittens. Now, you know this story, it's so much fun. And then think of all the fun that they had when they were in their living room making their mittens. Everybody looks very happy. But when the children told their mother they lost their mittens, take a look at this picture. And I'm afraid maybe that's how the children were just treated. It's almost frightening, isn't it? Well, let's take a look at this 1930s embroidered crib quilt. Now, it was for summer use, and in contrast, look at Mother Goose. She has a very kind, benevolent face. Well, you'll recognize the other nursery rhymes, too. There's Mary Mary, quite contrary, growing her garden. And then we have another little Bo Peep, pink and blue, looking for her sheep. Little boy blue with his horn. And then Jack and Jill going up the hill. Well, this, this crib quilt from the 1930s reminds me of the Campbell's soup kit. Oh, he's just so cute with his puppy and his kitty. Now the design was pre-printed on it because if you look at the flower, here you can see a few unstitched lines. That's the ink stitch, uh, ink right on there. And then the pastel colors were dyed and the embroidery done on top. Well, I love the interesting stitch on the border because the quilt maker actually wove her floss together. Well, this one is so fun. This one is just Ducky and Ducky Do. Oh, take a look. Here we have all the embroidery work. This little duck has his sailor cap on. He's in the water. And this one, Little duck with his umbrella, or maybe her umbrella, she's so fun. And then down here, water lilies, expertly embroidered. Now the pink binding is interesting too because it was brought from the back around to the front and stitched. And to go along with these is another little pillow with lady duck right here, so cute. Well, babies just love the softness of a chenille crib quilt. And this one is just so pretty and pastel. The crib quilt size, but just like grandma's. Oh, babies are so lucky. The true meaning of a crib quilt is a small textile sandwich, one square yard. Well, in the 17th century England, a baby was wrapped in a chrism cloth one yard in length and width for the baby's christening. Crib quilt patterns were often made exactly half the size of a standard quilt pattern. Now Sue Bouchard made the monkey wrench. 
and charming indigo blues. You know, it was really made recently, but it looks like it could have come from the last century. Oh, it's just wonderful. She machine quilted it. You know, Sue just loves to make quilts. And she enjoyed making the wild goose chase. It's also from reproduction, 19th century fabrics. Actually, 16 little geese in each one of those blocks all flying into the center square. It's just a beautiful reproduction type quilt. Now this one, the quilt maker made in the 1930s. The pattern is called hands all around. It's just a top using miniature piecing techniques. Well, actually, I guess it was pretty tough to do because she never did finish the quilt. Looks great, she should finish it, huh? Well, this is a true crib quilt by shape and by borders. Because when you look at the outside edge, you can see that the borders go the whole way around there. Now sometimes a frugal homemaker would merely cut down a worn larger quilt for a crib. And when the crib quilt was worn out, it became a dolly quilt. But this one actually is a crib quilt. Now crib quilts, are just great in animal prints. Old oh, kids just love the animals, and this one is so fun. Remember these two? The gingham dog said, bow, wow, wow. And the calico cat replied, meow. So fun with all of the grid quilting in it. Applique blocks, perfect for a child's room. Well, these are two of America's most loved characters, Mickey Mouse, and Minnie Mouse, he looks so good in his blue shorts and Minnie in her mini skirt. Wonderful quilts for the kids. Well, you know, babies just love puppy dogs. And I have several of those quilts. This particular one is called Little Bowser. Well, he was a Nancy Cabot pattern that appeared in the Chicago Tribune in 1935. Well, the Little Bowser blocks are appliqued but I took the little Bowser blocks and set them together with pinwheel blocks in bright childish colors. Well, that pinwheel block is just so easy to do. It comes from strips, that's the best part, and there's no squaring up in it, that's even better. Now, when you do the technique, you actually make two blocks at the same time. When you look at this one, you can see that the center is orange and the outside edges are green. Well, the second block made at the same time, the center is now green and the outside edge is orange. So they're actually mirror images of each other. Well, all you need to do is take two and a half inch strips like this, one of the green in the background, one of the orange in the background, sew them together and just lock those seam to get, seams together right in the middle. Then take a six inch square up and cut a square. Ooh, and if you're lucky, it's gonna be about a four and a half inch square. Well, once you cut a set of four squares, then you just go ahead and draw a diagonal line right down through the middle. So on both sides of it, and when you cut it apart, it's magical. When you cut in half and take this half, you're gonna see mainly green and just a little touch of orange. Well, four of those will actually set together into this block. Well, let's just close it up, do our magic trick, and actually take the second half. Now you see mainly orange with a little green in the center. Four of these will set together for the second block. Even though it's a double pinwheel, when you look on the back side, it actually becomes a triple pinwheel because of the way you can just flatten that center. Oh, it's just so much fun. The double pinwheel. Well, I have another cute dog, and it's the Scotty dog. It's so much fun. Now, it was actually an Alice Brooks pattern from a syndicated pattern service from New York City. This is another one. This actually appeared in the newspaper. And it said, just send 10 cents in stamp or coin. Coin preferred to obtain the pattern. Actually, it was Franklin Delano Roosevelt's dog, Falla, that inspired the pattern. Well, Falla received almost as much publicity 
as the president. And I have a cartoon picture of Falla. I think the country just loved her. Here she is right here, probably beside Eleanor's suitcase because she traveled so much. And here's her poor husband left at home. I love this one. I do wish she'd hurry back doing the dishes. And in the back, I have a picture of, of Eleanor with her dog. And here she is accompanying Eleanor on one of her walks. Well, when he'd wander off to pursue a scent, this high-pitched Fala summoned him back. I can just imagine Eleanor saying that. Well, the Scotty dog is very easy to make. You'll really enjoy this one. It is an applique technique, but we have a little secret using uh, pre-printed fusible interfacing. Now this is actually the little coat. You can put it on a plaid on point with the fusible interfacing and this is the Scotty dog as well. But you just place the fusible side of the interfacing against the right side of the fabric and all you have to do is just sew on the line and then you trim one eighth inch away. And this one is already trimmed. This is the little back trimmed one eighth inch away, then you need to have some tools. How about a straw and a ballpoint bodkin? And all you're gonna do is just push that right in there and just turn this right side out. Let me do one more because once you turn it right side out, then you have the fusible interfacing on the back side. Let me push it like this poke out all those corners, smooth it around there, and then place it right on the Scotty dog, place it on the background, fuse it in place, and then you can just go ahead, stitch around the outside edge either by hand or use your invisible thread for, with, for your machine. Oh, Scotty dogs are just so easy to make. At one time, it was easy for a doting grandmother or mother to make a crib quilt for the new baby because there were so many kits available. This is Barrel Bunnies. Oh, it's such a cute quilt. It's a kit that never got completed. And actually, when you look inside, everything is included. You get all the different strands of embroidery floss. The little barrels are printed right on the yellow check. And then there's blue bunnies and little pink bunnies, and they are made of the best quality flannel that I have ever seen. And once those are cut out, they're ready to be appliqued right onto the base sheet. Oh, it is a fantastic kit. Well, this kit is from Paragon Needlecraft. It was one of the three biggest manufacturers of kits. Now, the other two were Progress and Bucilla. You may recognize some of the other kit companies. There was Colonial Quilts from Aunt Martha, Hirschner's, which is still in business today. There was Home Arts and Lee Ward's, which was bought out by Grandma Dexter. Oh, just great kits. Well, I just purchased these nursery quilt blocks just recently, and they're waiting for my first grandchild. Well, the package says, Jack Dempsey, St. Louis, since 1949. So you can still get them today. All you have to do is just do all of the embroidery stitching right on the design. It's perfect. Well, this Peter Rabbit quilt was made in the 1930s, probably from a kit. Oh, the daddy rabbit is giving the two bunnies a ride and a blue cart while the others look on. And that one little bunny just looks like she's saying, Daddy, it's my turn. Well, the embroidery floss creates these engaging facial expressions. The stitching enhances the clothing, and there's just a great grassy yard for having fun. And I love those stylized blue flowers. Just a wonderful little boy's kit. And this one is as well, the Fisher Boy quilt. Oh, he's so cute. He has his pool and his red pail, and his little dog is trotting along with him on the way to the stream. Now, this is definitely for a girl. Mary Had a Little Lamb is also from a kit because you can see the quilting lines in the blue right around her dress. It's so much fun. And then her Dutch wooden shoes are just charming. And then 
the nursery rhyme fabric on the back is just a perfect finish. Well, I found it basted and I've been doing the hand quilting. It's wonderful. It's roundup time at the LW Ranch. Now this cowboy quilt is twin size, definitely from a kit. Oh, and there's so many things to look at. The embroidery work on the faces and on the cactus are just outstanding. And then up here in the corner, the little Indian is so cute. And you know, that little brown calf down in the corner is branded with LW. Well, this quilt is just perfect for when baby boy grows up. I found a photograph of a circus quilt made in 1910. It's just so cute in oil red and oil green colors of the times and some yellow, blue, and lots of black. Well, I like that quilt so much that I recreated it only using the tools of today. Well, here's the Siamese twins. They're joined at the leg. They're wearing little red hats and oh, they are so happy. Look at those smiles. And then there's the circus tiger wearing his red bandana. He's got a smile too. This is some trees coming down from the top of the block. Well, the Chinaman is leading the elephant probably at the head of the parade. Looks happy. And here's the circus train that brought them all to the site. Has some blue smoke coming out of the chimney. And then up here, the two Chinaman acrobats, just ready for their act. Well, the pattern was introduced first in 1910, but it must have been around for a while because in 1930, another quilt maker recreated it using the exact same patterns only the colors of the time. So different between the two. Well, I'm gonna stick with the 1910 because I like the bright colors, but I'm gonna cut it a quick way. They're all one and a half inch squares, and I'm using this special ruler that has these little slits in it every half an inch. I have a red piece of fabric, it's a quarter inch, a quarter yard underneath. I'm gonna line up the two zeros on the ruler at the bottom left, and I actually put the fold just a little to the side. Just gonna put my cutter into the slot and just trim away that edge, get rid of it. Okay, now it's gonna be one and a half inches every time. One and a half, three, you guys help me. And four and a half, and six, seven and a half, nine. Well, you can cut up the whole quilt in just a matter of minutes. Okay, I went one and a half inches the whole way across. Let's just trim that off at the end. Now, you turn your mat and then place your ruler back down again, this time placing the straight line right along the bottom, but allow a little room for trimming right there, and you just repeat with your one and a half inch squares. Let's take a look and see. Oh, perfect, right along there, a whole stack of them. Well, I like to cut all of my one and a half inch squares and then just stack them in this box so that I can keep them organized and just ready to grab. Okay, the next tool that makes this quilt very easy is fusible interfacing. Now it has a fusible side or the bumpy side. It has a gridded side. It's a one and a half inch grid on it. And it also has a stretch. So make sure that you stretch it and make and keep the stretch the same in all of the blocks. Well, once you have your squares cut, cut your fusible interfacing eight squares across and just start placing them. Let's see if I can get the start of the train right here. You're just gonna drop them right in the grid, right side up. You know, I think this is a great time for your grandchildren to help you out. And once they're all in place, just go ahead, take your iron, press, set the seam, use an up and down motion, getting everything perfect. Well, once it's pressed in place, you can take it to your sewing machine and just fold it on the line, crease it, so a quarter inch seam, just roll it along, crease it, and sew it again. And what happens is that it shrinks up like this. All of the vertical rows are sewn. Next, you take the little tip of your scissors and just do little clips right on that line up to the stitching. 
then all you need to do is fold one more time and make sure your seams go in opposite locking directions. Once they're sewn together the second time, this is what it looks like on the back. And when you're done on the back, turn it and press it on the front side. Then all you need to do is add your lattice and your nine patch cornerstones to set your block together. Well, let's go to the nursery because I have a few more stories to tell you. This charming alphabet quilt was designed to teach children letters and names of objects. Well, they're from the Nancy Page Quilt Club newspaper patterns that appeared in 1929 in syndicated newspapers around the country. The column was written by Florence Legenke Harris. I have one of the original patterns. This is the apple that appeared in the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle. It was just so cute. And then the second block, the flower. Now in each column, Florence Legenke wrote a story about the quilt, almost sounding nonfiction. Well, in this alphabet quilt, the main characters are Aunt Nancy and little four-year-old Joan. Well, in this story, for the B block, the little story said, one evening Aunt Nancy told her of the bluebird and the happiness for which it stood. And for the C block, the story said, the little cat block made Joan chuckle. Well, he is cute. Well, Nancy explained if she used all 26 letters in the alphabet, she would have an uneven number. And she wanted to quilt four by six. Nancy said, why not let the Y stand for you, the person who is going to get the quilt? Oh, the stories just go on and on. Well, I have another really cute quilt that Sue made just recently, all from one and a half inch strips. This one has all 26 letters in it. Well, soft toys were often made from feed sacks. This is just a little cloth doll that mother was supposed to cut out and sew and stuff. The front side of it's here and then in the back side, the back of the girl and you can see her hair. Well, the next one, this sailor boy is one of my favorites. It was printed during World War II when many of the, the fathers were off to the war. Well, you see the sailor on this side of the sack and then when you turn it over, you have the flower sack. Just so much fun. But this is my best find, my go-to-bed book. Well, it was copyrighted in 1955 by the Morrison Book Company from Princeton, Illinois. Well, I found several of the sacks, so I took some of the sacks and I added lattice to them and just made it into a quilt. Oh, it's great with the greens and the yellows and finished with a reproduction fabric on the borders. Well, this one is in its book form and it brings such fond memories. Oh, I just have to read it to you. My go to bed book. Look at the clock. What does it say? Time to go to bed. It's the end of the day. I take off my sock and I take off my shoe. I take off my panties and other clothes too. Then I go to the bathroom and climb in the tub. I wash my face clean and I rub and I scrub. I brush my teeth before I forget. And mother says, are you ready yet? Then I put on my pajamas and climb into bed and wait for my go-to-bed book to be read. Then I get sleepy, so sleepy, so I close each little eye and before I know, I feel a soft little kiss on the top of my head. I peek and see my mama leaning over my bed. Good night, my precious, I hear her say. Go to bed now, go to bed. Go to sleep, go to sleep. Shh. And it was done by Velma Ford, illustrations by Mary Wynn. 
will make each crib quilt you create become a lasting memory in the minds of your little ones.